G'day! Hello, how are you going? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Say hello to all my subscribers, not subscribers, trolls, bots, and yeah, the lurkers alike. And I'd like to say thank you to the lurker that created an account just to say hello and subscribe. Thank you. Uh, also, I'd like to say thank you to all the subs. I've reached 2,000. I really appreciate everyone supporting me. Um, it's great. Thank you very much. It should have happened a while ago. Uh, last weekend, I had um, 2,007 subscribers. Uh, they just seem to, every time I do a video, I gain subs and they take subs. Uh, it's really frustrating. So, yeah, I had 12 uh, last weekend and, yeah, so I'm sitting at 2,001 at the moment. So, yeah, hit that like button and subscribe and we'll keep sharing and bringing you stuff that you might know about. So I'm just going to show this one about pseudo history. Do you know what pseudo history is? Have you heard of it before? I'm pretty sure you have in some f form or another. Okay, pseudo history is a form of pseudo scholarship that attempts to distort or misrepresent a historical record, often by employing methods resembling to those used in scholarly historical research. The related term crypto history is applied to pseudo history derived from the superstitions, intrusic occultism. Pseudo history is related to pseudoscience and pseudo archaeology, and the uses of terms may occasionally overlap. Although pseudo history comes up in many forms, scholars have identified many features that tend to be common in pseudo historical works. One example is that used of pseudo history is almost always motivated by a contemporary political, religious or personal agenda. Pseudo-history also frequently presents some sensational claims or a big lie about historical facts which would require underwarranted revision of the historical record. Another very common feature of pseudo-history is the assumption that there is a conspiracy among scholars to promote mainstream history over so-called true history, which is commonly collaborated by elaborate conspiracy theories. Works of pseudo-history often point exclusively to unreliable sources, including myths and legends, often treated as literal historical truth. To support these theses being promoted while ignoring valid sources that contradict it, sometimes a work of pseudo-history will adopt a position of historic relativism insisting that there is really not no such thing as historical truth and that any hypothesis is just as good as any other. Many works of pseudo-history conflate mere possibility with actually, assuming that if it, something could have happened, then it did happen. Notable examples of pseudo-history include the Holocaust denial, the lost cause of the confederacy, the Irish slaves myths, the Armenian genocide denial, the myth of clean Wharton, can't say that, sorry, and the claim that Caitlin, Caitlin Massacre was committed by Shilton Staffel and not the Soviet K, NKVD. So the definition and the etymology, the term pseudo-history was coined in the early 19th century which makes the world word older than a relative term, pseudo-scholarship and pseudo-science. In Atensian from 1815, it is used to refer as the conquest of Homer and Hesoid, a perpetually historical narrative describing an entirely fictional contest between the Greek poets Homer and Hesoid. Their proactive sense of the term labelling a flawed or disingenuous work of historiography is found in another 1815 attestation. Pseudo-history is akin to pseudo-science in that both forms of falsification are achieved using the methodology that purports to, but it does not adhere to the established standards of research for the given field of the intellectual inquiry of which the pseudo-science claims to be part, and which offers little or no supporting evidence for its plausibility. Writers Michael Schirmer and Alex Gro Groberman Define pseudo history as the writing of the past for present personal or political purposes. Other writers take a broader definition. Douglas Alchin, a historic historian of science, contends that when history 
of scientific discovery is presented in a simplified way, with drama exaggerated and science romanticised, this creates a wrong stereotypes about how science works, and in fact constitutes pseudo-history despite being based on real facts. So the characteristics, Robert Todd Carroll has developed a list of criteria to identify pseudo-historical works. He states that pseudo-history is purported history which treats myth, legends, sagas or similar literature as literal truth. It is neither critical nor sceptical in its reading of ancient historians taking their claims at face value and ignoring imperial or logical evidence contrary to the claims of the ancients. A sense. It's on a mission, not a quest, seeking to support some contemporary political or religious agenda rather than find out the truth about the past, often denies that there is such a thing as historical truth, clinging to the extreme sceptical notion that only what is absolutely certain can be called true and nothing is absolutely certain, so nothing is true often maintains that history is nothing but myth-making and that different histories are not to be compared on such traditional academic standards as accuracy, imperial, probability, logical consistency, relevancy, competence, fairness, honesty, but on moral, political grounds. It's selective in its use of ancient documents, citing fabrically those that fit with its gender and ignorant or interpreting away those documents which do not fit considers the possibility of something being true as sufficient to believe if it is true, if it fits with one's agenda. Often maintains that there is consistency to suppress its claims based off because of racism, atheism and or ethocentrism or because of the opposition to the political or religious agenda. Nicholas Goodrich Clark prefers the term crypto history. He identifies two necessary elements as a complete ignorance of the primary sources and repetition of inaccuracies and wild claims. Other common characteristics of pseudo history are the arbitrary liking of desperate events so as to form, in a theorist's opinion, a pattern that is typical, typically then delivered into a theory or postulating a hidden agent responsible for creating and maintaining a pattern. For example, the pseudo-historical, the Holy Blood and the Holy Grail links, the Knights Templar, the medieval Grail romances, or the Moravian Frankish dynasty, and the artist Nicola Poussin in an attempt to identify lineal descents of Jesus, hypothesizing that the consequences of unlikely events that could have happened, thereby assuming tactically that it did, sensationalism or shock value, cherry-picking evidence that helps historical argument being made and suppressing evidence that hurts it. Categories and examples. The following are some com common categories of pseudo-historical theory with examples. Note that not all these theories are listed are category unnecessarily pseudo-historical. They are rather categories that seem to attract pseudo-historians. Ancient aliens. Ancient Technologies and Lost Lands. Emmanuel Velosky's books Worlds in Collision, 1950, Ages in Chaos, 1952, and Earth in Upheaval, 1955, which become instant bestsellers, demonstrated that pseudo-history based on ancient mythology held potential for tremendous financial success and become models success for future works in the genre. In 1968, Eric von Daken published Chariots of Gods, which he claims that ancient visitors from outer space constructed the pyramids and other monuments. He has since published other books in which he makes similar claims. These claims have been categorised as pseudo-history. Similarly, Zachariah Stitchin has published numerous books claiming that a race of extraterrestrials beings from the planet Nibiru, known as the Anunnaki, visited Earth in ancient times in search for gold and that they genetically engineered humans to serve as their slaves. He claims that the memories of these occurrences are recorded in Sumerian mythology, as well as other mythologies all across the globe. These speculations have likewise been categorised as pseudo-history. The ancient astronaut hypothesis was further popularised in the United States by the History Channel's te television series Ancient Aliens. Historic history professor Ronald H. Fritz 
observed that the pseudo-historical claims promoted by Von Daken and Ancient Aliens program have periodically popularity in US. In a pop culture with a short memory and voracious appetite, aliens and pyramids and lost civilizations are recycled like fashions. The author, Graham Hancock, has sold over 4 million copies of the books promoting the pseudo-historical thesis that all major monuments of the ancient world, including Stonehenge, Egyptian pyramids, the Moye of Easter Island, were all built by a single ancient super-civilization, which Hancock claims thrived from 15,000 to 10,000 BC and possessed technical and scientific knowledge equal to or surpassing that of modern civilization. He first advanced the full form of his argument in his 1995 bestseller, The Fingerprints of Gods, which won popular acclaim by the scholarly Dunstan. Christopher Knight has published numerous books, including Uriel's Machine, 2000, expounding pseudo-historical assertions that ancient civilizations possessed technology far more advanced than the technology of today. A claim... The claim that the lost continent known as Lumuma once existed in the Pacific Ocean has likewise been categorised as pseudo-history. The Progress of Learned Elders of Zion is a fraudulent work purporting to show a historical conspiracy for the world dominion by... The work was con conclusively proven to be a forgery in August 1921 when the Times revealed that the extensive proportions of the document were directly plagiarized from Marius Joy's 1864 satirical dialogue, di dialogue in Hell Between, as well as Herman's Gaucher 1868 anti-Semitic novel Baraz. Sorry for saying these wrong. The Cars Theory is an academic fringe theory that postulates that the bulk of European Jewry are of Central Asian, Turkic orange, origin, in spite of mainstream academic con 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 consensus. Sorry for saying this wrong. This theory has been promoted by in anti-Semitic and anti-Zionist circles alike, arguing that there are uh, an alien element both in Europe and Palestine. Denial and denial in general are widely categorized as pseudo-history. Major proponents of the Holocaust include David Iving, and others who argue that the Holocaust, Holodomir, Armenian Genocide and other genocides did not occur or were exaggerated greatly. Some Muslims deny the Jewish history of Jerusalem and in particular they deny the existence of the Jewish Temple on the Temple Mount, alternative chron chronologies. An alternative chronology is a revised sequence of events that deviates from the standard timeline of the world history accepted by mainstream scholars. An example of an alternative chronology is this guy's new chronology, which claims that recorded history actually began around the year 800 AD and all events that allegedly occurred prior to that point never really happened at all or are simply inaccurate retellings of events that happened later. Other less extreme examples are the phantom time hypothesis, which asserts the years AD 614 to 911 never took place and the new chronology of David Roll which claims that the accepted timelines for ancient Egypt and Israel history are wrong. Ethnocentric revivalism. Most Afrocentric i.e. pre-Columbian African Americans contact theories, see ancient Egyptian race controversy, ideas have been identified as pseudo historical alongside of the indigenous Aryans theories published by Hindu nationalists during the 1990s and 2000s. The crypto history developed within Germanic mysticism and Nazi occultism has likewise been placed under the categorization. Among leading Henrik Himmler is believed to have been influenced by the occultism and, according to one theory, developed the SS base at Walsenburg in accordance with the historic plan. The sun language theory is a pseudo-historical ideology which argues that all languages are descended from a form of proto-Turkish. The theory may have been partially devised in order to legitimize Arabic and Semitic loanwords occurring in the Turkish language by instead inserting that the Arabic and Semitic words were derived from the Turkish ones rather than vice versa. 
A large number of nationalist pseudo-historical theories deal with the legendary ten lost tribes of ancient Israel. British Israelism, also known as Anglo-Israelum, the most famous example of the type, has been conclusively refuted by mainstream historians using evidence from a vast array of different fields of study. Another form of ethnocentric revivalism is nationalistic pseudo-history. The ancient Macedonians' continuity theory is one such pseudo-historical theory which postulates demographic, cultural and linguistic continu continuity between the Macedonians of antiquity and the main ethnic group in present-day North Macedonia. Historical falsifications. In the 8th century, a forged document known as the Donation of Constant, which supposedly transferred authority over Rome and western part of the Euro Roman Euro Empire to the Pope, became widely circulated. In the 12th century, Geoffrey of Monmouth published his story of the kings of Britain, a pseudo-historical work purporting to describe the ancient history and origins of the British people. The book synthesis earlier Celtic historical, uh, myth mythical traditions to inflate the deeds of the mythical King Arthur. The contemporary historian William of Newburgh wrote around 1190 that it's quite clear that everything this man wrote about Arthur and his successors or indeed about his predecessors from Wharton onwards was made up partially by himself and partly by others. Historical revivism. The Shakespeare or authorship question is a Finch theory that claims that the works attributed by William Shakespeare were actually written by someone other than William Shakespeare of Stratford-upon. See, William Shakespeare is supposed to be um, the guy that done the Bible, Jeff uh, Bacon, um, and Shakespeare is just supposed to be made up completely. Uh, William is uh, I am to Shakespeare. Another historical, uh, another example of historical revivalism is the thesis found in the writings of David Barton and others asserting that the United States was founded as an exclusive Christian nation. Mainstream historic historians instead support the traditional position which holds that the American founding fathers intended for church and state to be kept separate. Confederate rev revivalists, a.k.a. Civil War revisionists, lost cause of the Confederate, neo-Confederates, argue that the Confederate States of America prime motivation was the maintenance of the state's rights and limited government rather than the preservation and expansive of slavery. Connected to the lost cause of the Confederate is the Irish Slaves Miss, a pseudo-historical narrative which can conflates the experiences of the Irish indentured servants and enslaved Africans in the Americans. This myth, which was historically promoted by the Irish nationalists such as John Mitchell, has in modern day been promoted by white supremacists in the United States to minimise the mistreatment experienced by African Americans such as racism, racism and segregation and imposed demands for slavery reparations. The myth has also been used to obscure and downplay Irish involvement in the transatlantic slave trade. Atchery. The consensus among academics is there's no sh strictly material, sorry for saying that wrong, society is known to have existed. Anthropologist David Brown's list of human cultural universes features shared by nearly all current human societies includes men being the dominant element in political affairs which is the contemporary opinion of mainstream anthropology. Some societies are matrilineal and matrifocal, but in fact have patriarchal power structures, which may be misidentified as matriarchal. The idea that matriarchal societies existed and they preceded patriarchal societies was first raised in the 19th century among Western academics, but it's since been discredited. Sorry for saying these words wrong too. Despite this, however, some second wave feminists assert that the matriarchy preceded the patriarchy. The goddess movement and Rain Esler's The Chalice and the Blade cite Venus figurines as evidence that societies of Paleoithic and Neoithic Europe were matriarchies that worshipped a goddess. This belief is not supported by mainstream academics. Pre-Columbian trans-oceanic 
contact theories, excluding the Norse colonizations of the Americas and other reputable scholarship. Most theories of pre-Columbian transoceanic contact have been classified as pseudo-historical, including claims that the Americans were actually discovered by the Arabs or Muslims. Gavin Menzies' book, 1421, The Year China Dis Discovered the World, which argues for the idea that Chinese sailors discovered America, has also been categorised as a work of pseudo-history. Psychohistory. Mainstream historians have categorised psychohistory as pseudo-history. Psychohistory is an amalgam of psychology, history and related social sciences and the humanities. Its stated goal is to examine the why of history, especially the difference between stated intention and actual behaviour. It also states its goal, the combination of insights of psychology, especially the psychoanalysis, with the research methodology of social sciences and humanities to understand the emotional origin of the behaviour of individuals, groups, nations, past and present. Racist pseudo-history. Josiah Priest and other 19th century American writers wrote pseudo-historical narratives that portrayed African Americans and Native Americans in an extremely negative light. Priest's first book was The Wonders of Nature and Providence displayed 1826. The book is regarded by modern critics as one of the earliest works on modern American pseudo-history. Priest attacked Native Americans in American Antiquities and Discoveries of the West, 1833, and African Americans in Slavery, as it relates to the Negro, 1843. Other 19th century writers, such as Thomas Gold Appleton, in his Sheaf of Papers, 1875, and George Perkins Marsh, in his The Goths of New England, seized upon false notions of Viking history to promote the superiority of white people, as well as oppose the Catholic Church. Such misuse of Viking history and imagery re-emerged in the 12th century among some groups promoting white supremacy. Religious pseudo-history. See, Bible and Christ myth theory. The Holy Blood and the Holy Grail, 1982, by Michael Bajan, Richard Lee and Henry Lincoln. Lincoln is a book that purports to show certain historical figures such as Geoffrey of Bullen and contemporary aristocrats are the lineal descents of Jesus. Mainstream historians have widely planned, panned the book, categorising it as pseudo-history and pointing out that the genealogical tables used in it now known to be superiors. Nonetheless, that the book was an international bestseller and inspired Dan Brown's best-selling mystery thriller novel, The Da Vinci Code. Although historians and archaeologists consider the Book of Mormon to be an anchoristic invention of Joseph Smith, many members of the Church of Jesus Christ and Latter-day Saints believe that it describes ancient historical events in the Americas. Searches for Noah's Ark have also been categorised as pseudo-history. In her book, Stating with the Witch Cult in Western Europe, 1921, the English author Margaret Murray claimed that the witch trials in early modern period were actually an attempt by the chauvinistic Christians to annihilate a secret pagan religion, which she claimed worshipped a horn god. Murray claims have now been widely rejected by respected historians. Nevertheless, her ideas have become the foundation myth for modern Wicca, a contemporary neo-pagan religion. Belief in Murray's alleged witchcraft is still prevalent among Wiccans, but is gradually declining. The Christ myth theory claims Jesus of Nazareth never existed as a historical figure and that the existence was intervened by early Christians. This argument currently finds very little support among scholars and historians of all faiths and has been described as pseudo-historical. Hinduism, the belief that ancient India was technologically advanced to the extent of being a nuclear power gaining popularity in India. Emerging extreme nationalist trends and ideologies based on Hinduism in the political arena promote these discussions. Vesnu Devani, the education minister for the western state of Rajasthan, said in January 2017 that it was important to understand the scientific significance of the cow as it was the only animal in the world to both inhale and exhale oxygen. In 2014, Prime Minister Narendra Modi told a gathering of doctors and medical staff in Mumbai Hospital 
that the story of the horned god Ganesha showed genetic science existed in ancient India. Many New Age pseudo-historians who focus on converting mythology, mythological stories into history are well received among the crowd. Indian Science Congress Ancient Aircraft Controversy is a related event where Captain Anad Jade Bordas, a retired principal of a pilot training facility, claimed that the aircraft more advanced than today's versions existed in ancient India in the Indian Science Congress. So did you like that one? I just thought that was pretty cool. Um, really cool to uh, share some of uh, what goes on. You know, but uh, this is you know, education to share for historical knowledge. Um, just putting it out there. So, yeah, if you're still with me, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Hit that like button so it can get shared more and su subscribe if you like the content. Cool. Alrighty, I'll see you in the next one. Raise your vibrations. Bye now.